Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, he said, Falanas alan alladhina ursila ilayhim, walanas alan al mursaleen. We are going to ask the people to whom the messengers were sent to, and we're going to ask the messengers themselves, all shall be questioned. And Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, he said, Wa inna hu la dhikrun laka wa liqawmika wa sawfa tusaloon. The Quran is a reminder for you and your nation, and you shall all be asked. And from the mercy of Allah Almighty, we have not been left in the dark. For those who wish to make an early preparation before that standing, before Al Malik, the King Allah, knowledge of these questions have been given for us so that we can make a preparation today. And from these questions, I will share with you 10. As for the first of these questions, there is going to be a question about our salah, our prayer, about every element of the salah, the standing, the quality of the bowing, the duration of the prostration, the quality of your wudu, the time of your prayer, how you covered yourself, the prayers of the past that you may have missed, the prayers you did not repent from missing. And that is why our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the very first action that man will be asked about in front of Allah from all of his deeds is the salah, the prayer. If the prayer is complete, this person would have prospered and would have succeeded. If however the prayer is deficient, then he is in ruins and this person had failed. And if the prayer is deficient in any way, before this person is punished, Allah will say to the angels, look, does he have any other extra prayers that we may use to patch up the obligatory one? He said, the rest of your deeds will be assessed in the exact same manner. So when it comes to charity, zakah will be looked at, the obligatory one. If it is lacking, Allah Almighty will tell the angels, look into the voluntary sadaqah. Fasting, siyam of Ramadan will be looked at, the obligation. If it is lacking, the other extra fasts of Mondays and Thursdays, etc. will be looked at. And the rest of our deeds will be assessed in the same way. So how does one prepare for this question if he is afraid? By making sure he repents from prayers he has missed in the past, makes them up, perfects his wudu and the bowing and prostration, organizes his or her day around the salah, and amasses as many extra voluntary salah that you and I will be saved by on the day of judgment if the obligation is lacking. As for question number two, there is going to be a question about al-na'im, the delights, all of the blessings that we are enjoying from head to toe, the macro, micro, material, immaterial, religious and unreligious blessings. Allah said, <laughs> Then you are going to be asked on that day about the delights. And according to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, some drinkable water and some basic dates and some simple meat will be questions that will be asked about on the day of judgment. According to him, they were delights. What then, alhamdulillah, of the Muslim of the 21st century drenched from head to toe in favors that the kings of the past never dreamt to experience. Water on demand, hot and cold, sanitation on demand, food at the click of a button, homes cozier, more spacious than ever before, furniture more inviting than ever before, instant communication, opportunities to trade, we are going to be asked about the delight. That is question number two. As for question three, four, five, six, and seven, these five are found in one hadith. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the feet of man will not move from the presence of Allah till he is first asked about five things. Here they come. An hayatihi fi ma afna. Your life, what you did with it. Wa an shababihi fi ma abla. And your youth, how you spent it. وعن ماله من أين اكتسبه وفيما أنفقه and your money how you earned it and how you spent it number five وماذا عمل فيما علم and what you did with the knowledge that you acquired question number eight Allah has promised that there is going to be a question about the senses that we have been blessed with Allah جل جلاله said ولا تقف ما ليس لك به علم don't pursue that which you have no knowledge of why because indeed the hearing and the seeing and your heart, all of these matters shall be questioned, Allah Almighty said. 
So one who is afraid of the prospect of being asked of his limbs and senses will lower his gaze when haram presents itself in front of him and will cover his or her ears when haram presents itself to him and will protect their heart when doubts about their religion come in. They will learn and ask the people of knowledge and they will protect their hearts from the prohibited attachments. As for question number nine, there is going to be a question about how you and I behave when we saw evil unfold in front of us. And this is a frightening one indeed. When you saw something prohibited happening in front of you, what was your knee-jerk reaction? Was it live and let live? Was it each to their own? Was it don't go around judging people to the rest of these meaningless statements? Or were you a person who was concerned about the welfare of your friends, your family, your colleagues, your society? You tried to give advice wherever appropriate and possible. And should you be unable to advise, did you stay there enjoying yourself with them or did you vacate the scene as Allah Almighty wants from us when unable to speak or do something about it? And that is why in a terrifying hadith, our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah will ask a person on the day of judgment with so much detail till Allah will ask man, why did you not prohibit the evil when you saw it happening in front of you? The hadith says, if Allah wants good for this person who fell short, Allah will inspire him to say the following words. My Lord, I had hopes in you and I feared the people. He's honest. And our Prophet ﷺ would say, no man should allow his fear of people to prevent him from speaking the truth when he comes to learn of it. This hadith made some of the Sahaba cry, including Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, the narrator of the hadith. He said, Wallahi, we have seen evil things happening. We were too scared to speak about it. And he also said, I wish that I had not come to learn of this hadith. It's a responsibility. So when sat with friends, when sat with colleagues, when sat with families, we have an obligation, if haram is happening, to change it. If you are unable to speak out against it, minimally vacate the scene and ask Allah Almighty for tawfiq and help. As for the final question that I wanted to share with you this afternoon, there is going to be a question about our actions at large. Allah Jalla Jalaluhu said, Tawa Rabbika lanas'alannahum ajma'een amma ka'anu ya'maloon. By your Lord, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are going to ask them all about what they used to do. And some of the last words which our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam communicated to the Muslims in the farewell pilgrimage, he said to them not long before he died, you're going to meet your Lord and he's going to ask you about what you used to do. We are still in a deep state of akoma and we are truly not appreciating the enormity of what is coming our way. قُلْ إِنَّ الْخَاسِرِينَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَهْلِيهِمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah said the true loss is when a person loses himself and his family on the day of judgment. أَلَا ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ That indeed is the manifest loss. We ask Allah to protect us from this outcome and to inspire us with aid and tawfiq to prepare well in advance of our meeting with our Honorable Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala.